What's up gamers, I'm RC Styles, you're watching Gamers Purgatory, and this is Gaming News. Why are you looking at the PS4 version of Final Fantasy VII Classic? Well, just wait a second and watch this video. Long ago, we looked upon a foreboding sky. The memory of the star that threatened all burns eternal in our hearts. In its wake came an age of silence. Yet with each fond remembrance, we knew those encountered were not forgotten. That someday, we would see them again. Perhaps it was no more than wishful thinking. But after the long calm, there are now the beginnings of a stir. The reunion at hand may bring joy. It may bring fear. But let us embrace whatever it brings. For they are coming back. At last, the promise has been made. Okay, so yes, I know that's an old video, but listen, it's post E3, and there was a very, very exciting presentation on Monday evening of the post E3 week of, of E3 weekend, excuse me, gonna have to edit that part out, because I can't talk apparently today. So anyway, the presentation consisted of creators and developers uh, of Final Fantasy VII Remake. And during that, they talked about different things that would be a part of the Final Fantasy VII Remake. They even and even like uh, showed us more gameplay and everything else like that. So, one of the things they discussed is that Final Fantasy VII Remake is going to take up up to at least two full Blu-ray discs. Now, does that mean we're going to get the game on two Blu-ray discs right at one time? I'm not sure. It, there's even been talk about them uh, doing it two separate games. With that note being talked about, they said the Midgard chapters alone would take up one of those Blu-ray discs. So effectively, they could make two games out of this. They could also go DLC episode routes as well. Because remember, the original game on PlayStation 1 was three discs. Of course, they weren't Blu-ray discs. <laughs> Next thing I want to talk about is their um, active time battles and everything that you're going to have. Everything is real time for this one. Um, I'm going to link to the presentation and I'm also going to be linking to a few other videos here as well. Um, the gameplay mechanics look like it's going to be a lot like Final Fantasy XV. I kind of like that idea being that you're trying to breathe new air into basically a classic Final Fantasy game to begin with, but you're really revolutionizing it, so I'm looking forward to a new battle structure. Also, a storyline, nobody wants them to change anything, but I understand there's going to be stuff that they couldn't put into the original Final Fantasy VII. You know, just couldn't do it, I guess. There will be subtle changes uh, to Tifa's appearance, uh, if you can remember, and Final Fantasy VII original, as you'll probably see when I do more playthrough of this. Tifa kind of was like all over the place from the waist up, if you kind of catch my drift. Uh, they're looking to be able to tighten that up a little bit and make when she moves a little bit more realistic.
uh, another thing is uh, to do limit breaks in the game it looks like there's going to be a feature that allows you to freeze time and give you like menus and selective uh, options to do whether you want to fight or you know like your limit breaks your magic etc we've seen that before uh, we saw that in the first installment of Final Fantasy 13 um, where you can kind of freeze time and make your selections. Um, that's going to be kind of uh, neat and interesting to get into. Uh, you're going to have a different kind of flow when you play that uh, with, with that feature in hand. Um, being that you're not going to have all your characters on screen at one time like you're selecting here, there is a feature that's going to allow you to switch between characters and control them like you would have controlled Noctis in Final Fantasy XV. And I do believe they even added a feature where you can switch between your characters and control them at a later point. Um, as you know, we are still doing Final Fantasy XV videos focusing on the episodes here, but I'm also going to focus on other stuff when we pick that back up as well. There is a new trailer for Final Fantasy VII Remake. It will feature more gameplay from the characters as well as show you the first look at Tifa. It's a little special thing at the end of that. I mean, it's not really going to be that big of a surprise because I will touch on that um, before the end of this video. I mean, right now I know I'm leaving a few things out, but I'm try to remember as we go along here. Um, <clears throat> In regards to Final Fantasy 7, I do also know um, they will be having the person that voiced Cloud in both the Japanese and United States languages from Final Fantasy 7 Advent Children, we will be reprising his role as Cloud in this one. That's going to be great to see. Uh, it looks like there's a different voice actor for Sephiroth. I don't know if the Japanese will keep the original actor from Advent Children or not. Of course we're keeping his name Cloud, don't we? <coughs> Now in this game, there's a lot of things that determine your story, you know, how, how you talk to people, everything else like that. I'm curious to see if that's going to be in the new game or not. I mean, it, who could deny wanting to possibly influence who you go on a date with at Golden Saucer to be redone? I wouldn't mind seeing that. So as I said, I will be uh, linking to the E3 presentation of the Final Fantasy VII Remake, as well as the trailer for uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake that reveals the release date. Since that release date has been revealed, I will go ahead and tell you, uh, anyone has PS4, you can right now, <clears throat> you can right now actually pre-order Final Fantasy VII Remake. You can get Standard Edition, you can get the Deluxe Edition, the Deluxe Edition will include your story art, it's also going to include a mini soundtrack. Uh, the digital pre-orders give you a wallpaper, and it's pretty awesome looking, I must say. I have that right now. Um, I did order the Lux Edition, but there's also a First Class Edition that gives you all of that, plus the steel book cover for like a physical copy, and you get a little statuette of Cloud on his motorcycle. Now, even though I did get the digital copy, don't be surprised if I actually end up getting a physical copy too. If I do that, we will have a unboxing.
Hmm? What then? <laughs> it has been a while since I played this, so if I look lost, don't sue me. Pretty much gonna go at least up to where we fight the scorpion boss. Now back to them talking about how they're gonna do this game, being as two Blu-ray discs full of data and everything else like that. I honestly hope they do give it to us all at once. I've waited so, so long for Final Fantasy Remake. I've talked about it to a for years and years. When 15 came out, I got real excited thinking that, you know, hey, we might actually get this, you know, because of the way Noctis felt playing him. It, it was definitely a throwback to Cloud. Seeing so many different videos for Final Fantasy Remake. There was even one point where we thought that it just wasn't going to happen. And I was so excited to see that E3 presentation. The replacement of actual voice structure instead of the text is going to be cool. I've always wanted to see this portion of Final Fantasy VII done like a movie. Was that when? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wife's teasing me that I geeked. I mean, it's not a lie. I'm a huge Final Fantasy VII fan. Final Fantasy in general. I do have every single Final Fantasy game that's been made. Movies as well. We even have the Final Fantasy Unlimited cartoon series. I have the Crystal Chronicles animated series. So, needless to say, yes, Final Fantasy VII is my holy grail as far as being a Final Fantasy fan. <laughs> <laughs> Might be asking yourself why. Well, okay, I, like I said, I played every Final Fantasy, and this one was the first one to go 3D. And for its time, the graphics were amazing and everything else like that. Now, of course, we're playing PS4 and awaiting PS5. These graphics are shit. Just like when we played the, this game for the first time, Nintendo and Sega's graphics were bullshit at that by comparison. So, it, it's definitely going to be a lot of changes, graphic and voice structure-wise, gameplay. It's going to be a brand new game, no matter how many times you played Final Fantasy VII. And we will not get into how many times I've played Final Fantasy VII, even though I earn every copy that's been available, physical, digital. <laughs> Hell, I even once paid $200 for a physical copy of Final Fantasy VII that had the U.S. cover art. I think I've bought Final Fantasy VII about the same amount of times as I bought copies of the original Lost Boys movie. <laughs> I just can't say that I've ever paid that much for a Lost Boys movie. <laughs> So, 
before we get too much further into me talking about Final Fantasy VII Remake and talking about the reveal date, that's not the only thing that was revealed at that uh, E3 presentation. Now, being that Final Fantasy VII is a little bit ways off, and you're probably sitting there like I am, God damn it, I waited so damn long, why we gotta wait even longer, why couldn't we get a November release, or maybe even a summer release, you know, uh, hint hint, it's not even gonna be 2019, <laughs> but for those of you that just gotta have a Final Fantasy fix before this actually gets released, they are also releasing Final Fantasy VIII Remastered Edition. Now that's going to come out in 2019 ahead of Final Fantasy VII Remake. And of course I will be getting a copy of that and doing a video of it, don't worry about that. <laughs> and as we get closer to that release date, I'll give you more news and everything else in regards to Final Fantasy VIII's uh, Remastered Edition release. I think they're gonna like do a little bit more update on their graphics and stuff. I don't think we're gonna get a full-blown Final Fantasy VII Remake-esque for Final Fantasy VIII. I just think they're updating their graphics. Maybe adding some voice talent. <clears throat> if you're looking for a release date on Final Fantasy VIII Remastered Edition, there is no current actual date, it's just uh, labeled as a 2019 release. I think I'm forgetting something. <laughs> ah, Mr. Person, got a double back. Screen here, like the Final Fantasy 7 Classic, you can kind of fight anyone at any time. The only thing different is certain enemies are more acceptable to like magics and such. One thing they're bringing back to Final Fantasy 7 Remake is the battle structure also from Final Fantasy 10, meaning that certain characters had a more bigger impact on certain enemies. So you're not just going to be able to wail on people with just about every other character. Like flying enemies, you may want to be using Barret more than say Cloud until after Cloud gets his Omni Slash or Bravers. Um, certain characters will probably be susceptible to fighting, so Tifa may become like your best character at that point. And of course I know some of the characters will be all well rounded. One that comes to mind is Vincent, how he can both use his gun as well as, I believe he had some weapons too, like uh, some sort of sword. Again, it's been a lot of years since we played uh, this game. I believe its original release was in 96-97. So you're looking at... Geez, well over 30 plus years waiting for this remake <laughs> that, that the original game came out. Yeah, because you figure 
99 would be 10 years for 2009. I mean, not 10 years, Jesus. 20 years, right? So, 97, 98, 99, there's 23 years right there since that game came out. And then by the time it's released, it's going to be at least a good 25 years. You know? I don't think that's it actually saved properly. I think I was running my mouth too much. Here's an example of a certain map. Certain characters, as I mentioned earlier. Oops, I didn't mean to use ice. That was my dumbass. another thing I don't know about the save points you might be able to save just about anywhere or they may have stands in it yeah well in 15 you had to go and save in trailers it wouldn't save until like you rested you know it may be similar there So right before we fight for the last boss, the release date for Final Fantasy VII Remake is a 2020 release date, but it's not as far as you think we're going to get a March 3rd release date. Now, as you've seen in other Final Fantasy games before where they've had like a little bit of a far back release date, sometimes we've got it a little sooner than planned, and then there's been times where it's gone past the initial release date. It looks like they got just about everything done, so of course I'm hoping for an early release date. But once again, right now, the release date for Final Fantasy VII Remake is March 3rd, battle they did show that this particular boss battle is going to be extremely different very extremely different in this one you can pretty much pelt him with your limit breaks attacks and magic except when his tail is up so we're going to show this one real quick 